welcome to Lily and the Bee. My name's Lily, thank you for joining me today. Um, I'm sorry it's been a bit of a break since I last recorded, um, but we've had a couple of weeks off work, my husband and I, and went away in our camper van. Um, we didn't go to Scotland as planned because the weather was not just rain, uh, flooding and really torrential rain, so um, we postponed that trip to next year. Um, we were supposed to go going because we live in Suffolk. It's a long way to go up to Scotland from here, and we'd planned to stop off on originally at York on the way. So we still went to York, spent uh, spent a day there, and then we went to Flamborough Head, saw the cliff in the shape of a dinosaur, which was really cool, and we saw some seals on the beach. Um, really enjoyed it. There was caves. We it was just just brilliant. Suited us down to the ground. It was no one around. Um, quite treacherous walking in the caves because it was just so slippery, but um, we were fine. I found a few pieces of sea glass actually. I'm just going to show you quickly. Sorry about the rustling. Not many, not as many as our beaches, but these are the ones I found at Flamborough. They look bigger there than they do in real life. My hand looks really big. There's a nice, can you see the tiny piece of blue, which is a pretty colour? Um, yeah, so I was pleased to find oh, some more here. I was pleased to find them. Oh, that one's a nice shape. I might do something with that one. I could drill the middle of that and put it on a bag. So yeah, that was good. And yeah, had a nice break from work. Two weeks. I haven't can't remember the last time I had two weeks off in a row from work. So that was really nice. I'm, it's Wednesday today, so I've been back to work a couple of days. So I'm getting into the swing of swing of all that again. I'm looking forward to recording today and showing you a couple of my makes. Now, do you remember last time I showed you my Luna Lapin felt animals I'd made and I showed you the Highland cow who I hadn't really bonded with? Well, um, one of my lovely viewers, Joy of Things, um, is her channel. She has a little channel, so um, check her out. She makes lovely little, just short little videos, which are really nice. Um, she suggested... Um, she made me feel a little bit guilty, <laughs> but she suggested his name would be Arthur. So um, I've given him a name, Arthur. Well, Joy of Things has given him a name, and I've made him a little outfit look, and now I've bonded with him. See his eye? So, what do you think? Do you think he looks good? I think he looks better in clothes. Maybe I was put, putting me off him because he was because he didn't have clothes. I don't know, but he's got a little neckerchief, just a little red t-shirt. And a pair of trousers, little buttons on the side. And I made him a little belt. And if you've been watching me long enough, I imagine you'll know what I've used <laughs> for the little belt buckle there. It's a suspender belt piece. And it, it literally just fits, fits through there perfectly. I say I made the belt, it was just a ribbon. I think I bought some jewels fabric from Hobbycraft and that was wrapped up in that. And I, I like that ribbon, so I've kept it. So yes, perfect for that. So he has got a bit of a tummy on him, hasn't he? <laughs> this had the cool crafting ones are designed like that. You sew them in three pieces. They do tend to have a bit of a larger lower body. But anyway, there he is, Arthur. And he, he looks happier now, doesn't he? I don't even mind his hair. I was going to make him a hat, but then I wasn't sure about his, because he's got the horns. There he is, Arthur. So I'll set him back there, next to the pumpkin people. What else? Oh, do you remember I had some pieces of fabric that my mum gave me, which were donkey's years, donkey's years old. Is, I'm not sure if I said on Norfolk or Suffolk saying donkey's years. Do other people say that in other parts of the country? I'm not sure. Anyway, donkey's years old. A long, a long time ago she got them. Um, and I finally used them. She gave them to me and I, I wanted to use them. So I've cut them into hexes and um, sewn them together. English paper piecing, EPP. And then I was going to make them into just a normal project bag or a, just a tote bag. But then I'd got this bag that I bought ages ago. And originally I bought it because I was going to make some granny squares. And I thought I could put, just cover, rather than making a, um, a crochet bag, they can be a bit floppy, can't they? You can line them and everything. And I thought I could maybe cover this with granny squares and maybe do something around there. But I never, I never really got around to it. So I found this when I was looking at some other things, and I've stitched this on here. 
it was quite difficult to stitch. It was a bit in and out, and obviously you're kind of going in the bag, but you can't see, you can't see any of the stitches inside. Um, so yeah, I was a bit as if you're doing a tapestry sort of in out, in out sort of thing. But it, um, I've got hair on it. Um, I'm really pleased with it. I think it looks good. So that is my shopping bag. Which I'm now going to use. I might make some more of those. I chose the best of the colours for the um, hexagons because they were obviously they were old fabrics. They weren't all nice colours, um, but these ones, the ones I chose, were pretty. And I think it's really nice to reuse them, especially because they've been sitting in my mum's stash for about 40 years and then my stash for about five years. So um, they're finally being, being used. I'm just gonna have a little bit of a drink. I don't think I've t told my mum I've made it yet. I'll have to show her a little picture of it. Yeah, I, yeah I'm gonna use it for shopping, I think. Or going to work. When I go to work, I, I work from home, but I have to go into the office occasionally and I can walk takes about half an hour so I normally put all my uh, but the, the little box my computer box I have to take with me it's really heavy and I've got a little bit of lunch and things so I might put that in there actually because it, it's quite sturdy so it won't be so hard on my on my back carrying all the heavy things on my back so yes made that I'm happy with that um what else have I been up to I went the first week when we we had two weeks off the second week we went away the first week my husband's son came to stay so they spent time together so I had a bit of time to myself so I thought oh, I'll go to the beach for the day just go for a little walk so I parked up about 10 minutes from here um, I thought I'll just go a little walk and then I thought oh, I'll walk a bit further walk a bit further and I'd gone about an hour and a half uh, met another man he just said oh how far have you come so I said oh you know just explained and he said you can't get much further because there's deep water going across. The road across the other side of the beach floods, so they dig a trenchy type thing, but that makes the sea go across like a thin river sort of thing. And he said, oh, he's up to his thighs, and you know, and I thought, he said, you won't be able to go any further. And I'm the sort of person, if someone says to me, well, you know, you won't be able to do that, I thought, well, I'll just go and have a look. I think I, I, think I can do that, I'm sure I can do that. So I went. <laughs> And um, I, could, I couldn't see how deep it was, because it, it was only about this wide, so it wasn't, wasn't really wide, but obviously, because it's sand and then a little bit of rivery thing, you can't really see. So I'd got my trainers on and socks, so I took them off, and I'd got cycling shorts. So um, I thought, well, I could lift my skirt up. I'm not sure this is too much detail, there's no one else around. <laughs> I could lift the skirt up and, um, wade through basically and if my cycling shorts got wet I could take them off and put them in in my bag because I'd still got a skirt on so I kind of tentatively walked through and then it was getting deeper and deeper and deeper and then honestly it was up to my just above my thighs it was deep but got across I was like yay I did it and I was really proud that man said I couldn't do it I did it it's dangerous I shouldn't do things like that especially by myself so but anyway got across but then I found the most amazing piece of tea pottery, which I'm so happy about. This is my bag from that trip where I found loads. Um, and I will show you, this is just so pretty. And the flower, it's sea pottery, so it would have been from a plate or something that had been broken and somehow ended up in the sea. And then the edges have smoothed over the years. It's faded, but just so pretty. I just love how it's exactly it couldn't have broken in a better place, could it, to show the to show the picture on it? So it was worth getting soaking wet for that. But then I'd gone so far, I thought, mm, to walk back, I've got to go through the wady thing again and get soaking wet again, or and then an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes to get back to my car, or 15 minute walk, climb up the cliff with a piece of rope <laughs> and, um, and get the bus back to my car, which is what I did. It was dangerous, I was up this rope. <laughs> But anyway, it's like extreme beach combing in <laughs> these dangerous places. I also found, oops, this little tiny piece, which I found some of this before. And if I can, I made a necklace out of it, so hopefully I can find the photo and I'll show you. But this is a tiny piece of the same, the shaft's coming off, okay. The same um, piece of pottery. So I found a few pieces similar to that. I found another piece larger piece like this 
and yeah, lots of sea glass. Um, if there's any special pieces, let me have a look. But this was a couple, this was a really nice blue piece. I'll definitely use that for a bag. Nice the blue, the blue's more unusual, so and just some general pieces, lots of lots of these. We find quite a lot of this. Yellow and pink. Which would have been of tiles, because you can see from the from the back. Um, yeah, so I think that is it for nice pieces of sea glass. Oh, it's another, this is quite a nice piece, triangle, green. So yes, it was worth it. It was dangerous, but it was worth it, and I was safe in the end. And I wouldn't have drowned or anything, because it was just, it was just got a bit wet, and then I wanted it didn't look too wet, because I had to get the bus, so um, I didn't really want to be <laughs> drenched on the bus. And I'd taken my shoes and socks on, off, so I could just put my trainers and socks on, so I could just put those back on again. And I looked normal by the time I got to the... Um, and then I got to the bus stop. Literally, the bus was there. They'd come every 45 minutes. And there was a bus there. Hopped on. Got back to my car. So that was good. A really nice walk. Lots of exercise. Which, when you work from... Of course, my job's sitting down. Um, it's really nice to get some exercise. So I do try and get out as much as I can walking. Um, while I was away, I also bought some fabric. A couple of pieces here. So I do want to make some more... Uh, project bags so I bought this one I might do this slightly differently I might not do the EPP I might um, make the bag and then use the sea glass just along the top I don't know I've got a few more ideas because I because I really want to get into using it more um, so this is the first fabric which has reindeers and butterflies little tiny deers and flowers I love the colours really nice and the lady who I the shop that I went into um was a really nice shop she said I asked for a fat quarter but then she didn't she said it was a skinny she wouldn't sell scat wouldn't cut me a, a fat quarter which was fine but a skinny quarter I'm not sure it was called a skinny, skinny quarter it was a skinny something anyway a long thin piece but which I didn't mind it was fine but it it's better for making bags because you've got a long a long piece oh that might be hot Maybe I ordered half a metre in. No, it was a skinny quarter, I think. I don't know. Anyway, it wasn't a fat quarter. It was a skinny something or other. But I like the pattern. It's lovely. Um, I bought a beach-themed one. Some shells. Which, that's Lewis, Lewis and Irene. It's got it written on the back. Threaded with love. Small things by the sea. So, love the colours of that. Love the shells. I also bought a mustard one which has, I thought there were spots, a little tiny, when I first looked at it, but they're little tiny skulls, but I really like the mustardy colour on that one. So I've got a few more, and I also want to use, which I've used fabric that I've upcycled before, but I want to make some more project bags with upcycled fabric, I think. Um, I have finished a couple of my other EPP bags that I started. Well, I finished one, still working on the second one, so I will show them to you next time because hopefully the second one will be finished by then. Um, I've been working on my crochet blanket, which isn't much bigger, but I will. It took me ages to get that. <laughs> I'll have to cut that bag, I think. Right, so that's come a lot coming along. Oh, it goes, matches my outfit today. So, like. The colours look really nice, I'm happy with that. So that's a kind of, when I'm in the mood, watching television or something, or husband's watching uh, television, I can just have a little go on that. Because I've, my shoulder hurts when I crochet sometimes, so I can't do too much in one go, so I'll just, just do a little bit now and again. And I had an urge to knit. I don't know why. Well, I do know why, because I've been making a lot of the dolls cloth dolls I think they need little knitted jumpers or little cro well or a crochet jumper but I prefer the style of a knitted jumper I think they look nice like the little v-stitch um yeah so I can imagine them in a little cute jumper with a little button or a little cardigan or a little wrap so I'd, in my head I wanted to make all those things but they I need to knit to do them so I vaguely know how to knit as in knit a row a purl a row cast on and cast off I don't think I've ever even increased or decreased. Um, my, I think I learned at school, but also my nanny taught me to knit. 
in, round, through and off, in, round, through and off, which is what I can remember. Um, I was speaking to my sister about it and she can, although she's not into crafting at all, as I've said before, she can remember in, round, through and off. Um, so, yeah, I had to, and I was thinking about it and I was trying to get to sleep and my husband was asleep, snoring away, and I thought, mm, I thought I'm going to go and try now. So it's one of those things where I leapt out, but right, find some needles and I've been practicing because I've got also got a lot of skeins of um, hand dyed, which I love hand dyed um, wool, so I've bought quite a lot and I don't really know what to do with it. So it's got a hole in it, so I'm going to pretend that is a a buttonhole, but it isn't, it's just it's just a hole. So here's my little practice session. So yeah, and there's the hole. Obviously I did something wrong. So I'm going to keep practicing with that. Um, I've had a look online. I saw some lovely books uh, with toys and knitted and knitted outfits and everything and I was nearly bought it. I thought, no, that's over the top. I can do knit a rope on a rope. I'm just gonna I'm not going to do it because it'll be too difficult to start with. So I had a look on a website which is called uh, I can't remember what it's called now. I'm gonna pause it and find out. Right, the website is called lovecrafts.com and I've ordered wool from them or fabric. Well, I've definitely ordered from them before, but they have free beginner, well, all sorts of patterns, but I looked at the beginner uh, patterns. So I found one for a, a little cardigan for a doll. And I've also found, um, because I know lots of people knit socks, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't wear them. So it's not something I'm interested in making, but I did see they had some, I will add a picture, wrist ticklers they're called. So a bit like a leg warmer, but for your wrists. So, but they look similar, a similar sort of, you knit them in the round like a sock, because they've looked quite simple and they look really nice with the hand dyed yarns. So I'm going to try and make some of those as well. So I bought some circular needles, but they're too big. I realise I need little ones. The loop needs to be the same size as the round, I think. So yeah, need to look into that a bit more, but I'm pleased um, with my little piece I've done already. <laughs> I'm quite proud of that. And it was nice doing it, it made a change from uh, crocheting. I'm going to do an episode on all the things I've crocheted before my amigurumis, because I've made a lot of toffed animals and a couple of things I've made from books. So I will do an episode on those. That's a plan for the future. And what else? I've got a little list here. So have I discussed everything that I wanted to? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, one of my lovely viewers, or a couple of people have asked where I got my name from, Lily and the Bee. So, it's it's not that exciting. Uh, my name is actually Lynette, my name isn't Lily, but I started getting called Lily when I was about 18 because um, a friend said they thought I looked like Lillian Gish, who is a black and white movie person. <laughs> um, and when I was younger, I had I looked a bit like, everyone used to say I also looked like Kate Bush, so kind of brown, fluffy curly hair. I hated my hair, I wasn't keen, I was just crimp it and straighten it and everything. Um, anyway, so yeah, so they thought I looked like uh, Lillian Gish, and for some reason the name Lily stuck. So I've been called Lily for years and years and years and years. When I started making bags and a few people, um, we had a knitting, uh, a crochet and knitting uh, group at work and we, we knitted and crocheted for charity uh, so but I couldn't knit or crochet then so I used to do all the sewing up which was a while back and I made myself a knitting uh, like a bag to put everything in uh, a project bag and lots of people couldn't continue to make me one so I ended up making a lot um, then a bit bit later on it was it was Covid and lockdowns and everything so I started sewing again and started making more bags and I set up a website page I needed a name for it so I called that Lily B because B was my maiden name. And so that's how that started, Lily B. Then I set up an Etsy shop. Etsy wouldn't let me have Lily B because someone else had already got it. How dare they? That's my name. Anyway, uh, so I was getting a bit annoyed with Etsy. I thought, well, maybe I'll put in a different spelling, Lily, and then the L-L-I-E, maybe bit e, e, no, I wouldn't accept anything. I was getting quite frustrated and I was just like, 
something in different variations. So then I went Lillian the Bee, and then ping, this is your name on Etsy. That kind of stuck. So then I was like, oh, right, okay, that will be my name. And I actually really like it. I love bees, I love nature, so it, it, it suits. So yeah, that's where the name came from. I think that is everything for today I can think of. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. If you've watched till the end, I appreciate it. Um, I hope you have a lovely week. I should be going back to the normal every week now as, as far as I can. All being well. Um, yeah, and I'll see you soon.